If you ask anyone with even a little bit of knowledge about space technology what the worst space project of recent times is, 99% of them will say the same thing. Boeing's Starliner. And honestly, they're not wrong. This program has been a disaster from the start. Missed deadlines, technical failures, huge cost overruns, and somehow still no certified crew missions, even though NASA has been pumping money into it for over a decade. Let's get into the numbers first. Back in 2014, NASA awarded Boeing $4.2 billion under the commercial crew program to develop Starliner. For comparison, SpaceX got $2.6 billion for Crew Dragon. Fast forward to now and who's flying? SpaceX. Regularly. Smoothly. But Boeing? Still struggling to get off the launch pad with humans on board. The problem started early. In December 2019, Starliner launched its first uncrewed test flight and it went badly wrong. A software error caused the spacecraft to fire its thrusters at the wrong time, putting it in the wrong orbit and preventing it from reaching the ISS. Boeing had to bring it back down early. No docking, no mission objectives completed. Then in August 2021, they tried again with second uncrewed test flight. But this time, they didn't even make it to launch. Just hours before liftoff, they discovered 13 stuck valves in the propulsion system, likely caused by moisture interacting with oxidizer. The spacecraft had to be rolled back into the factory for months of repairs. Another complete failure. Eventually, second uncrewed test flight was reattempted in May 2022. And yes, this time Starliner did reach the ISS and returned safely. But even that mission wasn't clean. There were thruster failures, and two of the RCS thrusters shut down during orbit insertion. Engineers later confirmed the failures were due to problems with the propulsion system's design. So even in success, it was shaky at best. Now let's talk about crewed flights. The first one was supposed to happen in early 2023, but it kept getting delayed. Then again in 2024. And now? We're in 2025, and Starliner still hasn't flown a single astronaut. Boeing and NASA are hoping to fly the crew flight test sometime this year, but nobody's holding their breath. Every time they get close, new problems show up. Software issues, hardware concerns, parachute problems, even questions about whether the spacecraft can safely operate during emergencies. And all of this is costing Boeing big time. In 2024 alone, Boeing reported a $523 million charge related to Starliner, bringing the total losses for the program to over $2 billion. That's on top of the $4.2 billion they got from NASA. So, more than $6 billion burned, and still no operational spacecraft. And the worst part? NASA is still insisting on funding this terrible program, even after all the failures, delays, and blown budgets. It doesn't make any sense. By now, Boeing has missed almost every major milestone, burned through billions of dollars, and still hasn't delivered a working crew vehicle. Any other company would have been dropped from the program a long time ago. This is why a lot of people believe there's more going on behind the scenes. The only explanation that seems to make sense is that Boeing is lobbying heavily, both in Congress and within NASA itself. They claim that the reason they keep funding Starliner is just to have an alternative to avoid relying on a single provider. But when you actually look at SpaceX's Crew Dragon, that excuse starts to fall apart. This capsule has been in active use since 2020, and in just a few short years, it's already flown over 10 successful crewed missions to and from the International Space Station. Not only has it become the backbone of NASA's current human spaceflight program, but it's also widely considered to be the most advanced and reliable crew vehicle in history. One of the most noticeable things astronauts experience when entering SpaceX's Crew Dragon is the increased interior space compared to older spacecraft. Crew Dragon's pressurized interior volume is approximately 9.3 cubic meters, nearly double that of Russia's Soyuz capsule, which only offers about 5 cubic meters. In Soyuz, three astronauts are crammed into a tight cabin where they sit shoulder to shoulder, and once they're strapped in, it becomes nearly impossible to move anything except their arms. The seats are designed specifically to absorb shock during launch and landing, but leave very little personal space. The protective suits, while essential, only make it more cramped. 
In contrast, Crew Dragon is certified to carry up to seven astronauts, though NASA typically flies only four per mission. This not only improves comfort, but also allows for easier movement, especially on missions that last longer than 10 to 15 hours. The interior layout of Crew Dragon also reflects a huge leap in spacecraft design. Traditional spacecraft like Soyuz or the now-retired Space Shuttle use control panels filled with hundreds of manual switches, buttons, dials, and circuit breakers. Operating these requires extensive training and constant monitoring. But Crew Dragon removes all that clutter, replacing it with three large touchscreens that serve as the main interface between the astronauts and the spacecraft's systems. These displays provide all the essential information flight status, trajectory, fuel levels, environmental conditions, and spacecraft health. If needed, astronauts can take over manual control using the screen, but the system is built for fully autonomous operations during launch, docking, orbit, and re-entry. This means minimal pilot workload unless a failure occurs. Another big improvement is Crew Dragon's onboard waste management system. In simple terms, it has a toilet. Previous spacecraft like Soyuz did not include a toilet. For short-duration flights, astronauts would wear absorbent garments, and for longer stays, they relied on the International Space Station's waste system. Dragon includes a small vacuum-powered toilet located near the top of the capsule next to the docking hatch. It uses suction fans and waste tanks to collect and store both liquid and solid waste in microgravity. However, there were problems early on. During the Inspiration4 mission in September 2021, a tube became disconnected from the urine storage tank, causing liquid to leak under the floor panels. A similar leak was discovered in Crew-2's Dragon capsule upon return. The issue stemmed from bonding materials that degraded due to acidic urine interacting with aluminum structures. SpaceX investigated and reinforced the tank system, sealing the components better and rerouting fluid lines. By Crew-9, the system was fully redesigned and cleared for regular use. Then there's the issue of cost. Each seat aboard Crew Dragon costs about $55 million, as reported in NASA's Office of Inspector General documents. Boeing's Starliner, by contrast, is projected to cost around $90 million per seat, even though the spacecraft has not yet completed a certified crewed mission. SpaceX has already launched 10 crewed flights, including commercial missions like Axiom-1 and Inspiration-4, while Boeing is still stuck in the test phase. As of late 2024, Boeing has reported more than $2 billion in losses on the Starliner program, including a $523 million charge in quarter 2 2024 alone, mainly due to engineering setbacks and extensive retesting. SpaceX's launch numbers also show just how far ahead they are compared to every other space company or agency. In 2023, SpaceX completed 98 successful orbital launches, a huge leap from their already impressive performance in previous years. This included missions for Starlink, commercial satellite deployments, International Space Station cargo resupply flights, and crewed missions under NASA's commercial crew program. Then, in 2024, they broke their own record with 121 launches, averaging one launch every three days. That level of frequency is something no other company or national space program has ever achieved. What's even more remarkable is that these launches weren't just about quantity. SpaceX maintained a near-perfect success rate and continued to reuse its Falcon 9 boosters at an unprecedented pace. Some boosters were flown up to 20 times, showing just how reliable and cost-effective their reusability model has become. Over 70% of the 2024 missions were Starlink-related, which not only fuels global internet coverage, but also allows SpaceX to control the world's largest satellite constellation. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.